Hey everyone, welcome back to Financial Futures. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing some shocking information regarding SNAP benefits, also known as food stamps or EBT, for low-income individuals. This includes a staggering $10 billion and nearly 12% error rate in payments. I want to break down all the details for you here in this video, explain what this means, and why we need to watch this very closely. Big changes are coming in just a couple of months. Let's get into it. First off, thank you so much for liking and sharing this video using the buttons down below. I really appreciate it. And while you're down there, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's totally free and it really helps support our community. Now, let's get into it and talk about SNAP benefits. I want to clarify quickly that everything I'm talking about here refers to SNAP benefits, EBT, food stamps, or the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. They all refer to the same thing. A new report was just released, and I want to bring it to your attention right away. Lawmakers are currently working on the Farm Bill, and it's very likely they will address these issues within that bill. The Farm Bill is going into effect in just a couple of months and these changes are going to impact around 43 million beneficiaries. Let's dive into the details of this report. Just like many other fixed-income benefit programs, SNAP benefits are federally funded but state-administered. This means the federal government provides the funds, and the states are responsible for distributing them. This can lead to a lot of mistakes, such as payments going out incorrectly either too much or too little. In 2023, there were $10 billion in incorrect payments. That's huge. Lawmakers definitely have their eyes on this $10 billion. According to the report, over 12% of SNAP payments were incorrect. More than 10% of those were overpayments, while about 1.6% were underpayments. It seems odd, right? You'd think there'd be more underpayments, but that's not the case. The majority of errors were overpayments. To put this into perspective, some households receive nearly $1,000 a month in SNAP benefits, while others receive significantly less. The amount depends on household size and other factors. The problem is, overpayments and underpayments affect the financial stability of millions of families who rely on these benefits. Now, lawmakers have seen this report and are concerned about the $10 billion in incorrect payments. They want to address this issue in the upcoming Farm Bill. They have a couple of months to finalize this bill, and they need to act quickly. The main question is, how will they fix this? It's a big concern for all of us. Interestingly, the error rate for SNAP payments was under 3% during the Obama administration around 5-6% during the Trump administration, and has now skyrocketed to over 10% in the last three years under the Biden administration. It's clear that the error rate has been increasing with each administration. So, what does this mean for SNAP beneficiaries? Overpayments might sound good, but it's a problem when the government tries to recover that money. With Social Security, if there's an overpayment, they are required to get that money back. With SNAP benefits, you might not get an overpayment letter, but your benefits could be adjusted in the future. Next I'm going to be discussing the newly released jobs report and the current 4.1% unemployment rate. We'll also dive into how many jobs were created last month and the significant revisions made to previous month's reports. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. This morning, we received the non-farm payroll number often referred to as the jobs report. This is one of the most crucial economic data points we get each month because it gives us a clear picture of the overall health of the economy. Whether you've been watching Financial Futures for a while or this is your first time here, welcome. This data is vital for understanding how our economy is doing. So, let's talk numbers. For June, we saw 206,000 jobs created. This is slightly below estimates, but still relatively close. However, the unemployment rate ticked up from 4% to 4.1%. It may seem like a small increase, just one-tenth of a percent, 
but it's significant. The last time we saw an unemployment rate of 4.1% or higher was in late 2021, nearly three years ago. Historically, a 4.1% unemployment rate isn't terrible, but it's the trend that matters. If we start seeing unemployment rates climb to 5.5% or 6%, it indicates significant economic issues. Lawmakers and policymakers will start scrambling to address the situation, much like termite scattering when exposed to light. Another important aspect of this report is the revisions to previous month's data. This morning, they revised past job numbers down by 111,000. That's a huge correction. Miscounting by such a large margin is concerning. Even the 206,000 jobs reported for June could be revised in the future. Now, let's talk about the labor participation rate. This month, it's at 62.6%, slightly up from 62.5% last month. This figure tells us how many people between the ages of 16 and 60 are working. For every person not working, it means fewer payroll taxes, which affects programs like Social Security, SSDI, SSI, and others. We also have the U6 rate, which measures underemployment. This includes people working part-time who want full-time jobs. This rate is at 7.4% significantly higher than the official unemployment rate. Some consider this the true unemployment rate. To sum it up, the latest jobs report shows 206,000 new jobs with an unemployment rate of 4.1%. We also have a labor participation rate of 62.6% and an underemployment rate of 7.4%. These numbers give us a snapshot of the economy but we need to watch future reports closely. Increasing unemployment rates could signal an approaching recession, despite assurances that everything is fine. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, and share. Leave your questions and comments down below. Check out other videos on the channel, including those I've hand-selected for you. Until next time, this is Financial Futures signing off.